Hello there. Welcome to this IELTS academic writing preparation video. Today we have a lesson about task one of academic writing. Specifically, we're going to be looking at pie charts. We've got two great examples for you today, and we've got a strategy and a guide and some helpful tips and tricks. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk a little bit about pie charts. These are the two most common types of pie charts. And the first type is just looking at one pie chart. The second one, you guessed it, is looking at two pie charts. So the idea is the same, but the strategy is a little bit different because the task is different for each one of these examples. So if you have one pie chart, you most likely have to just discuss the information you see in your pie chart, but if you have two pie charts, you will most likely have to compare and contrast the information you see in each pie chart. And this is probably the more difficult example and where students tend to make mistakes. Usually students will just discuss the information that they see in the two pie charts individually, but you really should compare and contrast it. That is why the test has given you two different pie charts. So it's a bit more difficult because you have to add in this comparison and this contrast when it comes to this information. Today, we're going to look at an example of each, so don't worry. We'll show you how to properly discuss information and what to compare and what to contrast when you have two pie charts. And so what is a pie chart? How is it different from a bar graph or for a line graph? And with pie charts, you'll really have to understand each segment. So it's very similar to what we have here in this circle. It looks like a pie and it is split up into various pieces. So you'll have to look at the percentages. So you may have 50% and 13%, things like this. So you'll have to understand the largest versus the smallest percentages that you see in your chart. So that is how you read a pie chart. It's a little bit more visual perhaps when it comes to the largest segments and the smallest segments. Again, it is also just a personal preference and you should be practicing pie charts, line graphs, bar charts, everything so that you are best prepared for the exam. No matter what you get though, you can pretty much use this general guide. We are going to tweak it a bit for our examples today, but you can expect to use two steps. The first step is analyzing the chart or charts and plan how to group the information. So you want to analyze what you have before you actually put the pen to paper. So you have to see what you're working with, if you just have one chart, if you have to compare. Again, we'll show you how to do this in our example. And of course, your second step is going to be write an essay using the recommended essay structure. Once we look at our first prompt, I'll show you the best structure to use that will really maximize your time and also maximize your organization. So let's go ahead and start with our first example today. We're looking at the guide. And just to be clear, remember, step one is analyzing the graph and planning how to group the information. Again, I told you we were going to tweak this a little bit. So just to be more detailed, you can group the information in these two ways. So these are two tips that you should keep in mind and you should be using this when you group the information. The first thing is to organize the information into two categories. Keep it at two because this makes it easier to write. You're going to have two body paragraphs so you can make your two categories, your two main paragraphs in your piece of writing. And then when you are organizing this information, you want to describe the key information from each of these categories. So you want to describe what you have to write before you actually write your essay. So in order to see this at work, we're going to start with our first example now. Let's take a look at the prompt. All right, and here we are with our first writing prompt for today. So let's take a look at the prompt and then we'll analyze this pie chart together. So it says, the chart below gives the percentage of social media users by age in Jamestown in 2018. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features, write at least 150 words. So we know that our minimum is 150 words. And of course, like the writing task one will show, 
we'll need to summarize the information and select just the relevant features. So if you look here, we have our step one already laid out for us. We have to analyze the chart and plan how to group this information. And this is probably the biggest question that you might have when it comes to pie charts. It may not be as obvious as bar charts or line graphs as to how to group the information. Here, for example, we have five different segments. And students will usually say, how do you pick two groups out of five segments? And I understand the point, but this is what you should be doing. You should be looking at the highest groups and the lowest groups. So the largest and the smallest, basically. And so we see here we have 13 to 25 year olds in blue. That is 40%. And then the next highest is 26 to 35 year olds. And that is 35%. So I right away, just seeing this, it catches my eye. I would separate the two biggest and the three smaller segments. So we're going to do just that. I'm going to go here in our first grouping, and I'm going to have the highest at 40%. So that again is 13 to 25 years old. And then the second group we'll talk about in the first grouping is the 35%, and that is at 26 to 35 years old. So we have our two options here for our first segment. And you have to think about what you want to say about this. And I'm no math whiz, but I do see that 40 and 35 equals 75. That's three quarters of the group. That's a high amount. So I'm going to make sure that I talk about that in my paragraph. So I'm going to say three quarters or you know, three fourths of the group are under 35 years old or they are 35 and under, and that makes a huge segment just with these two groups. Now, for our second group, we are going to add three of these segments. So we have 15%, and that is 36 to 45 years old. Then we have our 8%, and that is 46 to 55 years old. And our last very tiny segment is 2%, and that is over 55 years old. So we definitely want to call attention to the fact that a minute 2% of users is over 55 years old. And we also want to note that people aged 36 and over make up 25% of Jamestown's social media users. So I'm going to say 25%, they are 36 years old and over. So here we're talking about the specific segments and the last line I have in these boxes, these are really talking about the overall pie chart. So we've got three fourths under 35. And of course, from good math, we've got 25% or one fourth of the users are 36 years old and over. And these are the relevant features of this pie chart. You don't wanna make it too difficult for yourself. You don't want to create anything. You would not want to group the incorrect segments. So you definitely don't want to group the right side and the left side. I see a lot of students doing that and that is a common problem for this pie chart. You really want to think about this analytically. And so really think about the highest and the lowest. Okay, so this is the main part of step one. There's just one little portion that I want to go over before we look at our outline. And that is looking at the overview and looking at the overall trend of this graph. This is something we're going to have to talk about before we even start mentioning our groupings. And so it's very important to look at the overall trend of our graph. We already know that we've got 75% and 25% and we have our various segments, but what does it all mean? You have to start your essay with this overall trend. So basically what you see here is the older a person is, the less likely they are to use social media. Because if you see 75%, three quarters of our users are under 35, so 35 and under, and 25% are 36 and older. So quite simply, you want to say that the older a person is, the less likely they are to use social media. Okay, and that is exactly what we're going to focus on in our overview paragraph. 
And that is really everything that this pie chart has to offer to us. So we've looked at the specifics, we've looked at the general theme. Now I wanna take you back to our step two, which is going to be writing the essay using the recommended structure. Let's talk about that structure and let's also briefly touch on the scoring. Then we'll come back here and start writing. Now it is time to go back to our guide and just review step two, which is writing an essay using the recommended essay structure. You might be thinking, what is that structure? And I'll show you right here. So these are your paragraphs that you're going to use. We're going to look at four different sections. The first one, of course, is the introduction. The second is an overview. And then the third and fourth are going to be your body paragraph one and your body paragraph two. Three and four go hand in hand with what we just wrote for our first and second groupings. In your introduction, you are going to paraphrase the task question. So you're basically saying what is in your writing prompt, but you're using your own words. I'll show you how to do this in just a minute. In your overview paragraph, you are going to describe the overall trend or write a general overview of the main groupings. We've just done this, and we are going to focus on this first part here. We are going to describe the overall trend that talked about age and the lack of social media usage. Then in body paragraph one, we are going to write in detail about the first grouping in a logical way. So we're going to look at the higher amount of people who use social media based on age and then go from there. And then body paragraph two is going to be the same thing, writing in detail about the second grouping in a logical way. And this second grouping for us are the older age groups and how those age groups are not prevalent on social media. Following this will really be foolproof. You will be able to write everything that you have to write about and do so in a logical way. Before we start writing though, I want you to keep the scoring in mind because keeping the scoring in mind as you write will really help you make sure that you are ticking all of these boxes. So the first thing is task achievement. This means that you can accurately write about the information presented and you can do so in a minimum of 150 words and make relevant comparisons and highlight specific details. The second is coherence and cohesion. This just means your essay is easy to understand, it's clear and it's logical. And so the way we are going to group the data is going to be very important for this point. That's why the outline should really be followed meticulously. Then the last two are talking about your lexical resource and your grammatical range and accuracy. I like to put these two together because this all has to do with your language. So for your lexical resource, you want to make sure that your vocabulary is accurate, that it's clear, that it's relevant to the task, and that you can paraphrase the information in your charts well. And then for this grammar, you wanna make sure that you're using the correct grammar to describe trends and numbers and comparisons. The more complex you can be, if it's relevant, the better it is. So always make sure you're brushing up on your futures, perhaps your future perfects even, if you're looking at projections or predictions. In our case today, it is quite simple, but always make sure you are double checking your grammar. Okay, with this being said, let's go ahead and start writing. Okay, and here we are back to write our essay. Now on the right-hand side, you will see our area for writing. Of course, you do not want to use these headings when you are writing your exam. I've just included them so that you can see the separated paragraphs clearly because this will make a big difference in our coherence and cohesion. So we're going to start with the introduction. And remember, the introduction is just a paraphrased sentence or two based on this writing prompt. So you don't wanna to go too crazy with this. You do not want to get creative with it. You want to introduce your piece of writing, technically or scientifically, based on what was given to you. So with that being said, I'm going to say, the given pie chart provides information about the proportion of people using digital networking according to age group in Jamestown for the year 2018. 
And that is one sentence that clearly shows everything we are looking at. So we are going to go through all of the language afterwards, but I do want to just show you a little bit of the paraphrasing that I used. So it says in our question prompt, the chart below, I have said the given pie chart. So I've specified that it's a pie chart and I've said the given instead of just saying the chart. This comes with time and practice because a lot of prompts will have different ways to say the chart below. You may also see the given chart in your writing prompt. So keep a tab, keep a tally of what is usually given to you so that you can reuse it in your own writing. Now it says in the writing prompt, gives the percentage of social media users. I have said provides information about the proportion of people using digital networking. And digital networking is not included in our prompt, but it's a synonym of social media use. And just from studying technology, which is a common topic on the IELTS exam, you should have these synonyms ready and up your sleeve, ready to be used. So don't be afraid to use synonyms here. And it says by age in our prompt, I've said according to age group. And of course I've said in Jamestown for the year 2018. And that is basically a simple paraphrasing of what we see in our prompt. Again, with time and practice, you'll get a lot better at using synonyms and different ways to paraphrase. Now let's go to our overview section. And remember that was the last thing we did with step one. And we wanna talk about the overall general trend. So I'm going to start simply by saying, overall, the general trend of Jamestown's social media users in 2018 showed that the older people were, the less likely they would be to use digital networking. Okay, so this is the overall trend. I do want to point out this helpful grammar, which might be a bit confusing. So we see here that the older people were, the less likely they would be to use digital networking. Now, this is a type of conditional phrase. So again, remember, people is a plural word. It is irregular. So we've got one person, two people. So we need to use the plural form of the verb to be. And since we're doing sort of a second conditional here, we see that if people were older in our study, they would be less likely to use digital networking. So we have the past tense of the verb to be, and then the would plus the bare infinitive. So the less likely they would be. A lot of students would probably confuse this and say that the older a person is, the less likely they would be. And that is not completely correct because if you use a person for the first half of the conditional, you need to use the singular in your second half. So that would look like the older a person is, the less likely he or she would be. And that's fine. I just find that using the plural is a bit more succinct. It's a bit clearer and I do not have to worry about putting he or she in the second half. So this structure using the conditional is really helpful when it comes to questions like this because you are talking about something in the past and you are making a correlation. So based on this scientific evidence, you can use the conditional because you can say that the older people were, the less likely they would be to use digital networking. It's sort of like a cause and effect here, okay? And again, this is really important for your grammar. So make sure you're aware of these singular and plural words, conditionals, second conditionals, and the like. But in general, this is fine for our overview paragraph. We've talked about the main trend. And now it's time to go to our body paragraph one, and we're going to focus on our first grouping. So this was the 40% and the 35%. And it is quite significant. So I am going to start by saying in terms of the most significant feature of the chart, the largest category of digital communicators was the group aged 13 to 25, which accounted for 40% of the total users. Additionally, the next major segment of the population using social media 
included people aged between 26 and 35, which showed a slightly lower contribution at 35%. So you see how I have just made up two sentences based on just these two pieces of information. I wanted to call attention to the fact that 35 is slightly lower than 40, but I used detail and I threw in some nice terms for analyzing graphs, which we will look at at the end. I just want to add one more sentence talking about this significant three fourths under 35. So I'm going to say when added together, these two categories made up three quarters of Jamestown's social media users who used digital platforms in 2018. And there we have it. That is everything I wanted to include in body paragraph one. And now body paragraph two is going to go in a similar way, but I do wanna make sure that people know it is a huge contrast. So I'm going to say in stark contrast, the category with the lowest percentage of users included people over 55 years old, accounting for a minute 2% of all users. So I want to immediately call attention to the 2%, and now I'm going to work my way back from there. This trend was joined by people aged 46 to 55 and people between 36 and 45 years of age, representing 8% and 15% respectively. Okay, so look how I just managed to include these two pieces of data, 15% and 8% in one sentence, just by saying respectively. So that shows that 8% goes to 46 to 55, and 15% goes to 36 and 45. And now I just wanna call attention to this 25%. So I'm going to say of particular note is that those aged over 36 collectively made up only 25% of Jamestown's social media users. And there's our essay. So I am now going to color code this so that we can look at various types of language. We'll look at the word count and we'll start analyzing our piece of writing. Okay. And here is our finished piece of writing with color coded language. Now, first off, I just want to note that we have 197 words. That's great. We have met our minimum of 150, and we haven't gone too overboard. So we've done everything we had to do. Nothing is really unnecessary, so this is great. Now, again, we talked about the paraphrasing task question as we were writing it, but in blue, I want to call your attention to all of the synonyms and topic vocabulary. So we were given social media users, and I used digital networking, of course, social media users, digital communicators, social media, digital platforms, social media users again. You could also just say users, especially towards the end, because it is quite obvious that we're talking about social media users. So this works as well in order not to be repetitive. Now, looking at our useful vocabulary and phrases, this also includes some tricky grammar like we saw here and talked about using the conditional, so keep that in mind. Then with graphs, you could say accounted for when you're talking about percentages, so accounted for 40%. Now with pie charts specifically, you could say major segment. These are great words to use. And here we have people aged between. Now you wanna use this between, and we had our lovely groupings here. So using this between and then two numbers is really helpful in this case. We also have a slightly lower contribution, and that is again for percentages, and I was calling attention the fact that 35 is lower than 40, and made up, excellent phrasal verb, made up three quarters of. So when you're talking about pie charts, you can use percentages, you can also use fractions or quarters, that's really helpful, and it shows your range of scientific or technical words. Again, we have the category with the lowest percentage. So instead of segment or reusing segment, I said category. 
we have accounting for again. So note here that I said which accounted for, which was talking in the past. You could also talk in the present and say that this was accounting for a certain percentage. Then we said trend. So I used trend because it is a clear trend of older people who use digital media less. So I've said this trend was joined by, and then I had some percentages. Representing is another great way to talk about percentages. And this word respectively, I can't say it enough. It's a great way to join information together without being too repetitive or without using too many words. So 8% goes to 46 to 55 and 15% goes with 36 and 45 years old. So these two percentages match up with our ages respectively. This really joins it in very nicely. And then collectively made up, again, using this phrasal verb, I'm talking about how all of these three segments all together, collectively, made up 25%. Now, our important functional words really help our essay sing and flow together. So in the overview paragraph, overall is a great word to use because you're talking about everything in your pie chart. This is nice here, our sentence for the body paragraph one. It says, in terms of the most significant feature of the chart, and then I talked about it. Additionally, is a great way to add another example. And then when you really want to contrast something or show a completely different example, in stark contrast is an excellent way to do that. And stark just really adds it to an advanced level. You could also say in contrast, but in stark contrast makes that division even clearer and a bit stronger. And then of particular note is another advanced phrase that is great when you want to call your attention or call your reader's attention to something interesting. And in our case, it was this last piece of information here, about 25% of Jamestown social media users. So there you have it. That is our essay with one pie chart. Now we're going to take things up a notch and look at our second example for today, looking at two pie charts together. And here is our second example. So of course we have two pie charts here. So I'm going to read our prompt first, and then we are going to basically replicate what we've just done, but just add in some comparing and contrasting. So our prompt says, the charts below provide information on popular modes of transport in the city of Cambridge for the years 2008 and 2018. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. Okay, and again, we see our two charts here, cars, buses, bicycles, and walking, both in 2008 and 2018. So you might be thinking, this is a lot to write about. We've got two charts. How are we going to write about this in a clear, concise manner? And don't worry, I'm going to show you. And you really should keep in mind what we did previously in our example. Don't be nervous, don't be scared if you see two pie charts, the idea is the same. All right, so here we have our step one. This is exactly what we did before. And we need to group this information. Now, this is a really important tip, which we talked about briefly in the beginning, but a lot of students lose points for this type of writing because they don't compare the two charts. So a lot of students would put the 2008 chart in the first grouping and the 2018 chart in the second grouping, and you definitely do not want to do that. One, it's too easy uh, because it would be too simple to just explain this and explain this without connecting the ideas. So what we're going to do is follow the same idea from the previous example and look at the highest amounts. So right away, I see in 2008, 42% and 30%. This is the majority of the pie chart. And so I want to start here. I would make this a group, so 30 and 42%, and that is cars and buses. However, if this is my first group, I also want to compare how these cars and buses have done in 2018. So let's start it out. I'm going to include cars and I'm going to include buses as well. And here's another tip for you. 
you might see the two different spellings of buses. So in the exam right here, it says B-U-S-S-E-S, -S -S -E and I've written B-U-S-E-S. -E These are both correct. The form buses, the one that I've used with one S, is the most modern and the most common form of the word. But in the exam, it says B-U-S-S-E-S. -S -E -S. This is more formal and perhaps a little bit antiquated version of the spelling. I'm going to talk about how it's changed from 2008 to 2018, and this is an example of how I am making comparisons where relevant. So you want to start off with this right away. Now with cars, I'm going to say it has decreased from 42% to 20%. Okay, that is a clear change. Buses, I'm going to say again, decrease from 30% to 25%. And there we have it. So those are our two segments for the first grouping. And that leaves the second grouping with this red and orange, so walking and bicycles. So I've got here bicycles, and that has increased from 17% to 30%. And then walking, we see that has also increased. So increased from 11% to 25%. And those are our two groupings. You see how one grouping is decreased and the second grouping has increased from 2008 to 2018. Now I do also want to note whenever I write in my essay that the decrease from 30% to 25% for buses was slight and especially when compared to cars, that decrease is quite large. So that is something I'm going to talk about. Now, before we actually start writing our essay, remember we have that additional step, which is looking at the overall trend. Now, this is for our overview paragraph. We have to understand what is the main point, not really looking at specifics, but the overall information in this area. And so basically, we can see that walking and cycling became more popular with time, and cars and buses became less popular between the years 2008 and 2018. And we understood that from analyzing the charts. So I'm going to write that and say walking and cycling became more popular, whereas the bus use and cars became less popular. Of course, I'm going to spruce this up and write in full sentences in my essay, but this is just to give us an idea. I do want to call your attention to the fact that this is all you should be writing for the overview paragraph. A lot of students here would make assumptions, and they would say something like, this trend is explained by the increased focus on environmental initiatives, and people don't want to use methods that cause pollution. This could perhaps be true if you were to look at this and understand more data, but we do not want to speculate, we do not want to give any opinion, and we don't want to give any reasoning that is not included in our graphs. So we only want to be very specific and straightforward about what the information shows. Do not provide any reasoning as to why these percentages are the way they are. This will lose points for you because it is not adhering to the task achievement. So leave all of that to the second task. Task two is where you want to be analyzing and perhaps writing reasoning. Here, we want to be very specific and analytical. Okay, so we have prepared. Now I'm just going to show you the essay color-coded and clean for us, and we'll read it together and look at the language. And here is our essay. So let's read it together. And let's pay attention to our color coding. I will go through it together with you. First off, I just want to show you that the word count is 191 words. That's great. We've definitely fulfilled our minimum of 150. And I'll show you why this information is relevant and necessary. So let's start with our introduction. Remember, it's a paraphrased statement or perhaps even two statements that talk about the writing prompt. So I've written, the pie charts compare the popularity of various methods of transportation used in Cambridge in 2008 and 2018. So we see here the charts below in the prompt. I've said the pie charts. 
provide information. I've said compare just because I am setting the stage for what I'm going to talk about. Remember, you want to compare these two pie charts. And it says information on popular modes of transport. I've said the popularity of various methods of transportation. In the city of Cambridge, I've said used in Cambridge for the years 2008 and 2018. And I've said, of course, in 2008 and 2018. So you see how I've used methods of transportation instead of modes of transport. And I've gone ahead and talked about comparing right away. In our overview paragraph, I am talking about this information here, how walking and cycling has become more popular. And let's pay attention to the grammar. So it says, overall, after a decade, the general trend showed that Cambridge's population had moved away from using motorized vehicles, preferred by the majority in 2008, in favor of walking and cycling by 2018. So first off, in red, we've got our great functional words for providing an overview overall in the general trend. We're not talking about specifics yet, but I have the past perfect here. So had moved away from. That is because this is in 2018. Right now, we are in 2020. But in any case, it doesn't matter which year we're in after 2018. Since we're after 2018, you need to use the past perfect when talking about something that happened in the past from a past standpoint. So it says here, it showed that Cambridge's population had moved away from motorized vehicles in 2018. And that was preferred by the majority in 2008. And so you see how we have to use the past perfect when talking about this. Very important here. This is something that will probably come up when you have two pie charts because the dates are most likely going to be in the past. So remember to use your past perfect here. Then I've got synonyms and topic vocabulary. I've put motorized vehicles for cars and buses. That's a great synonym. And walking and cycling. So instead of saying bicycles, I've said cycling. Now our first body paragraph coincides with our first grouping here. And it says, in terms of vehicle transport, cars were the most popular choice in 2008, preferred by 42% of people. So I've got vehicle transport, which is a great way to talk about buses and cars together. And I see that cars were the most popular choice there. This was followed by bus usage at 30%, which was exactly what we saw in the green here. As such, 72% of people used either of these forms of transportation. So I've gone ahead and combined these two. I say that 30 and 42 is 72%. And so most people used one of the other because 72% is over half. And then I see, in contrast, over the next decade, personal motor vehicle use declined significantly. And by 2018, it was the least popular transport form. So I have gone ahead and talked about this comparison. So it decreased from 42 to 20%. And I've even talked about how it is the lowest number here in 2018. So it is a significant decline. Then on the other hand, the percentage of bus usage dropped only slightly by 5%. And that is exactly what we saw here and what I wanted to write in my notes. So declined significantly is great when talking about a large decline. Slightly is great when you want to do the opposite. Now our body paragraph two is talking about these other modes of transportation. So I've said in regard to other modes of transportation, Walking and cycling options were unpopular in 2008. So you see it is the smaller group and segment of the whole chart. So I said bicycle transport was only chosen by 17% of people, which we saw here, and traveling on foot was the least popular choice at 11%. Nevertheless, this is great when you want to include a contradictory piece of information. So even though they were so unpopular, Nevertheless, by 2018, cycling and walking had experienced a spike in popularity. A spike is a great way to say a significant increase. And then I wanted to say of particular note is that their collective use, so we're looking at red and orange, their collective use had made up more than half of selected transportation methods in 2018. And that's true because we see 25 
plus 30 is 55%, so it's more than half. And there you have it. That is all of our information. Keep in mind, we've used our important functional words throughout, synonyms and topic vocabulary. We didn't really have that many to choose from, but remember that you can say motorized vehicles for buses and cars, really anything with a motor, walking and cycling, vehicle transport, personal motor vehicle for a car. And then for your vocabulary and phrases, make sure you understand when to use past perfect, especially when you've got two dates in the past. We've done that again in our last statement here. So again, we're talking about two dates in the past. So you'll have to use the past perfect to describe that. That's why brushing up on your grammar and your vocabulary is really important when preparing for writing. So make sure you understand your tenses. And just keep in mind that we didn't have to add too much extra work here. We really just had to look at trends across two graphs and compare. So there was a little bit more work in this one, but at the same time, we really just had to follow the same strategy, look at the trend, and then write out the information. Great job today. Let's wrap up this lesson. Okay, now I just want to leave you with some do's and don'ts for this pie charts wrap up. First off, for your do's, remember you always want to analyze your chart or charts before writing. This is very important. Your outline and note-taking stage will only take a few minutes with time and practice. Today I went a bit slower to explain everything, but really get into the habit of doing this. It will not take you that long, and it would actually take you longer to fix your mistakes if you skip this step. So you want to really plan how to describe the information in your favor. Remember looking at the larger segments and the smaller segments. Then you want to understand the overall trends for your overview paragraph, and you want to organize your essay with that straightforward foolproof method that we showed you with the four distinct sections. And of course, don't forget, if you have to compare and contrast with two charts, go ahead and do that and look at the different timelines, pay attention to your grammar, and don't get nervous. Just remember what you have to do when you have two charts. Things you don't want to do, definitely do not start writing the essay immediately. Like I said, that's going to take you more time. It's going to do more harm than good, and you're not going to have a clear objective. So make sure you take that minute or two to really analyze and plan everything out. You don't want to write the wrong amount. Remember, minimum 150 words. We did not go over 200 today. That's where you want to be. So you don't want to write too much. You don't want to write 250 words. That would take far too long. So just make sure you're in between that 150 to 200 mark. Also, the more you practice, the more you'll understand what your writing looks like at 150 words, so you won't necessarily have to count your words on the exam. That takes up time. Just make sure you have a general idea of the length, especially in your handwriting if you're taking the paper-based test. And of course, don't get confused over two pie charts and the comparisons that you have to make. It's really straightforward, and you can use the guide that we showed you today even for two charts. Just make sure you pay attention to your grammar and make those comparisons. Great job today. We had tricky examples, but thanks for following along. And I hope you continue in your IELTS journey. So go ahead and follow us at www.bestmytest.com slash IELTS. If you visit us here, you'll be able to see other lessons for the writing section, speaking, reading, and listening as well. So we are waiting for you over there, and I will see you for the next lesson. Thanks. Have a great day.